This is the Golden Kingdom. I am Golden What Ifs, and this is What If Deku Had a Fast Learning Quirk. So if you enjoy, make sure to leave a like, leave a sub, and leave a comment down below. Because I know many of you have been awaiting the return of the kingdom, and if you want it to stay, you need to blow up these videos. With that said, let's get into the what if. Azuku Midoriya is born with a quirk. Yes, with a quirk. When he arrives in the doctors, he learns of the quirk he currently has. That quirk is something far different than he would possibly even imagine. He wants to be like All Might, strength, power, and anything you can think of, but this, this Suzuku would not have any of those. He would still need to work for it, but at the same time, he would gain something far greater than he could possibly imagine. Of course, the doctor would explain just in a minimalistic way what his quirk is, explaining that his quirk has something to do with receptors in his brain. It seems that his brain flares off when certain things happen and when certain things go about, as if he's learning faster than you could possibly imagine. His mother would say that he learns things in like almost an instant. You can think about learning multiplication and he was already a master of it. It was so quickly they all thought that maybe he was a genius, but when they asked him really, really difficult questions, he didn't understand how to compute them. He didn't know how to, well, do them at all. That's because he hasn't learned how to do it yet, and he can still learn, and he can learn extremely fast. That's what people don't understand, that he may not be a undisputed genius, but he can still be the genius. He can still learn faster than you can possibly imagine. So Azuka Midoriya would be taken home by his mother, and his mother would tell would tell Azuku to learn as much as possible, keep be be knowledgeable, and just learn as much as you possibly can. He would ask what would be the best thing for him to learn if he wants to be a hero, if he wants to be like All Might. Of course, Inko is not so sure. Maybe watch stuff of All Might. Maybe watch stuff of as many heroes as possible. Maybe, well, she doesn't like saying this as a mother, but maybe he should learn martial arts. He would ask what martial arts really is, and she would explain exactly what it is. She would set him up with a couple videos, just simple techniques and simple things that martial artists do, and he would begin watching them from time to time. And in a matter of days, Inko can see the progression that Izuku already has. His movement seems to be perfect in terms of kicking, punching, and so on and so forth. She looks at the videos she's shared with him, and it's as if he's kicking exactly like them. No, better than them. As if his technique is almost flawless. Inko, not being a big fan of fighting in general, would begin to show him though, just people that, are, that fight in MMA and also boxing. Maybe if he watches the highest level of boxers at a young age, when he's older, he'll be able to fight and protect himself, especially in the line of hero work. All that Inko wants to think about now is that if she does put him down this path of getting stronger, getting better, getting faster, and also being a hero, she just wants him to be safe. So this would be a responsible thing to do, frankly. Throughout school, he would begin to learn many of things. We're talking acing all his tests makes it very easy for him to just learn innate skills with a snap of his fingers, it feels like sometimes. He would listen to the teacher talk and explain one thing, and he boom, he would be able to get the answer in a matter of seconds. In terms of the martial arts and all of the fighting he's been watching throughout his life so far, he begins to actually join martial arts classes, learning from dojos and jujitsu classes and so on. He begins to learn from them and master them in a matter of, well, weeks, maybe a month. Azuku would learn all of this, learn how to fight amongst the best of them, and everybody would be impressed. Masters all around Japan would be impressed. What kind of monstrous brain does this kid have, and how is he able just to mimic everybody and be able to fight so amazingly? Even when they pull out stuff he doesn't know, he begins to read the field and understand what they're doing. And after maybe a minute of fighting somebody of, of an unknown style, boom, he understands exactly what's going on. That's amazing. Insane. 
something that no master of any dojo, no sensei of any dojo would ever even believe a kid could do, bar none an adult. I mean, Azuku's a kid. I mean, he they would never expect an adult to be able to do the things he's doing. I mean, how would a kid be able to do the things he's doing? But he's just impressive overall, super impressive. He was able to read the fields and do things that nobody would imagine. Throughout the years though, Bakugo would continue to bully Azuku. I mean, he has what, a nerd quirk? Come on, like that is so lame. Bakugo would continue bullying, teasing, and messing with Azuku, but Azuku wouldn't care. As long as things didn't get physical, he didn't mind. And one day it would get physical. When he's around 13, maybe 14 years old, Bakugo would take a swing at Azuku, and Azuku would easily dodge it. He would look at Bakugo and say that he can say all of he all that he wants in words, try to hurt his feelings, and do whatever. But when it comes to fighting, don't even try it. Azuku is cold and expressionless when he says this. He says that he does see Bakugo as a friend, maybe even his best friend. They've been friends for a long time, and Bakugo, whatever is going on with him, of course, he has his issues, but everybody has their issues. He tells Bakugo, though, that their little thing here, it will never get physical. If it does, he'll settle it, and he'll settle it for good. Azuku would walk away, and this is the most serious he's ever seen Azuku. Normally, he's go-lucky and happy and just doing whatever, but this is a different Azuku. Stoic, serious, and determined. He doesn't understand why, or Bakugo doesn't understand why Azuku didn't yield and just, well, submit, but that's not who he is. He's been training with martial artists, he's been doing all of this stuff, and he knows that his senseis would never want him to just submit to anybody. Defend yourself and make sure they know that you don't want a fight, but you will end the fight if needed. Azuku would, would have time pass on by even more. Schooling would be easy, and it seems like he would just coast through, ready to take on UA High School as soon as possible. He wants to take on that exam, pass it with flying colors, and he wants to make sure that he puts his imprint on everything that's going on. He wants to make sure that he can be the best, and that's all Azuku could think about. But while, while in class, in the last day of school, he, the teacher would begin talking about how they should take career aptitude tests. But he decides to just throw the papers in the air, saying they all, well, he, he knows all of them want to go the hero route. So he's going to let them. He knows that Bakugo and Izuku are trying for UA, and in terms of grades, they'll get in very easily, but he is worried about Izuku. I mean, Izuku, you're real strong, but do you really think you're strong enough to pass the exam? Izuku says that he doesn't have to worry, that he'll make sure to pass the exam, and he'll make all of them proud. As honorable as ever, the teacher would say, and Izuku would nod his head, and Bakugo would be pissed. He should be the only one getting into UA of his school. The only one. He would slam his hand on Izuku's desk, exploding it on the desk, and he's actually about to slap Izuku. He goes for the slap, but Izuku would punch him directly in his arm, and his arm would fall limp. Bakugo is shocked, but then his arm would wake up. He's confused. How did he do that? He then tells him, Azuku says that it was a pressure point, he just hit it at the right angle. He tells Bakugo to not do something that stupid again, he told him once and he won't remind him another time. Azuku would watch as Bakugo sits down and the teacher would be shocked, maybe Azuku is strong enough, maybe he is ready. He tells all of them that the day is now over and they're all allowed to leave. Azuku would continue writing in his journal as he's leaving, and Bakugo wouldn't even stop him this time around. He would continue writing, learning, and thinking. What, what could he do against certain people in hero society? Let's just give hypotheticals. I mean, what would happen if Endeavor turned, and he had to fight Endeavor? He literally begins to do simulations in his head. How would he go about defeating him? What would he have to do? I mean, with preparation, he probably could do anything, but without preparation, could he really beat somebody with firepower like that? Probably not. He does think about this. How is he supposed to fight off someone with an insane quirk, maybe a quirk that needs raw power? 
As he thinks about this, he enters the underneath of a bridge and he walks through as he begins to hear the rumblings below. Azuku would be confused and turn around. The rumblings are from the sewers. A sludge villain would come barreling out and Azuku would roll, would roll away and he would see as the sludge villain charges forward, saying in a weird voice that he needs his body, saying that he didn't know that whoever is here, he needs, or he needs to get away. Azuku's confused. What, are, what is this guy even talking about? Azuku would continue running, but he would grab stuff out of his backpack and he would begin throwing it at, the, at any weak points of the sludge villain. Seeing that the sludge villain does have eyes and needs to look forward to actually, well, get to Azuku, he throws it all his pencils the point side up toward the sludge villain, landing him right on his eyeballs as the sludge villain screams in pain as they stick there. Azuku would continue throwing pencils and other things that he has and more or less just stuns the sludge villain the best he possibly can. I mean, he doesn't have raw strength to do much about this, and he doesn't have anything on him to counteract the, the quirk that this obvious sludge villain has, but whoever is chasing the sludge villain, I mean, must be hot on his tail if he's this terrified. And he would be right, because All Might would come out of the sewer, and with one giant Detroit smash, the, the sludge villain would be gone. Azuku would roll out of the way, and luckily, luckily, he doesn't get hit by it. Azuku would roll back and see All Might, and he would be shocked. All Might, oh my god, what am I, what can I say, what, what do I do, and he's still freaking out. He asks for an autograph, and All Might, of course, obliges as they, can, they begin cleaning up the sludge villain from the ground. He then asks All Might that if someone doesn't have a quirk based on, well, really anything of raw strength or something that would allow well someone normal to defeat the sludge villain like that would they even be able to be a hero all might questions why he's asking but he does respond he says that anybody can really be a hero yes some may be better than others based on their quirks and god given god given quirk of course or whatever you want to think about it but you can always be a hero he does question, or All Might does question the idea that someone without anything, any quirk at all, could really be a hero, but they could make a difference in society as a doctor or something like that. Azuku's about to ask if he could be a hero based on basically the quirk he has, but just as he's about to ask this, All Might jumps off. Azuku sees this and grabs onto his leg, and All Might would eventually stop at a nearby building, telling the kid that that was extremely dangerous, he shouldn't have done something like that, that was... A horrible idea. Azuku apologizes, but he says that this is serious. He needs to know, can he, well, be a hero with a quirk that it only helps him, well, learn things faster? All Might is shocked. Learn things faster? As he says this, he would change into Small Might, and he would say that he is All Might, but he had a really bad injury a long time ago, and, well, this happens from time to time. Azuku is, is understanding of it, and he asks All Might once again, and All Might says that he thinks he can. He does. He just doesn't know how he'll do when things get very, very catastrophic. I mean, he might be good for a support hero, maybe someone behind the scenes, but as a front line? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. All Might would eventually leave, and Azuku would be kind of saddened by this, but at the same time determined. I mean, learning from sadness, turning it into determination is something that Azuku is good at. So he doesn't think too much about it. He begins to leave though, and as he does, he sees carnage. That carnage is because of the sludge villain. Azuku thinks to himself that he, they must have dropped the sludge villain when, well, he grabbed onto All Might's leg. Now, it's his fault. It's all his fault. As he looks, he sees one person. It's Bakugo. He's stuck within the sludge villain, and Azuku shocked. No, 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 this can't be real. How did he... Azuku would look to his right and look to his left. Think, think. No, just do. Azuku would run and see a, kind of a brittled pole. He would jump kick into it as it broke off, making kind of a sharp edged, edged pole. He would grab it and begin running. Pulling up his backpack as he throws the backpack toward the sludge villain, it covers his, his eyes just slightly. 
Azuku would hurl the pole like a javelin as if he's just throwing it, the spear, like a spear-like object right at the sludge villain's eye. It penetrates the eye of the sludge villain and blood can be seen kind of pouring out. Azuku would grab the spear, pulling at it as he jump kicks off the sludge villain's eye and everybody is shocked. This kid, how did he learn to do this? The sludge villain would release Bakugo, and he would grab Bakugo with one hand and using his entire body weight would throw him the opposite direction. Azuku would collapse to the ground and look up as the sludge villain attacks him. Azuku would look, would, would remain calm as much as possible, and he would chuck the spear that he ripped out of the, the sludge villain's eye back at the other eye. The eye gets hit, and as it does, well, all they can hear is a couple words. I am here. It's All Might. All Might with one punch. Well, defeats the sludge villain once again. Azuku would get scolded by all the heroes, but Bakugo would be praised. Azuku wouldn't think much about it. I mean, he'll do it again if he had to. Yes, him and Bakugo have turmoil here and there, but he'll do whatever it takes to save someone like that. He'll make sure his friends are safe. He begins to leave. And he does just that, eventually Bakugo catching up to him, saying that he doesn't need he doesn't need Azuku's help, and he's not getting a thank you. And he storms off. And frankly, this was Bakugo's way of saying thank you. Bakugo would have never even came to Azuku in the first place if he didn't want a thank you. Or if he didn't want to thank Azuku. And Azuku would just smile as he continues walking, and eventually someone would appear in front of him. It's all might, but in his small might form. He would tell Azuku that whatever powers he has, strength he has, he basically is using a quirkless body. But at the same time, he's utilizing his quirk to means that nobody even would believe he would be using. Everybody on that battlefield, All Might explains, believes that Azuku is just a talented kid that has an amazing quirk. They don't know what quirk it is, but it must be amazing if he can go in front of the sludge villain like that and not die. All Might would then tell him that he wants to give him something. He wants to show him that he could be the strongest. He can be even better than himself. All Might says that he really showed, well, the number one hero, that he can do even more. Yes, there are limitations many have. But sometimes you have to break those limitations and All Might is going to give Izuku that chance to break his limitations. He tells him that his quirk is called One For All. One For All is a quirk that can be passed down from person to person and he wants to give Izuku that quirk. Izuku is shocked and he says that it would be an honor. He promises to work hard and he'll, he'll make sure to do exactly what All Might is doing now. He will save everybody. Azuku says this and All Might smiles. He says that he knows. He knows he will. Azuku would be told that they'll begin training at Dagobah Beach and the next day they begin that training. He begins working out and frankly this is a lot quicker than you would believe because Azuku's already pretty fit. He's been training and working hard all his life so when they begin cleaning up the trash, he's able to clean up the trash relatively quickly in actually half the time. And when he's gifted one for all via a hair from All Might's head, Azuku begins to utilize it, focusing, learning. He begins to learn how to utilize one for all, and as he utilizes it, he knows that he should channel it throughout his whole body. He's not All Might. He can't just use it at 100% throughout his whole body, that would be insane. So it begins to mimic an idea of restriction, relaxing, and focusing on pulling punches. That idea, using that idea, he's able to actually implement it and he's able to utilize 5% of one for all. And this is only maybe months into their training or after the cleanup. So they're about seven months in and Izuku is bouncing around with 5% of one for all, even slightly sparring with All Might from time to time. Azuku is only getting stronger and one day All Might says they're going to be taking the day off and Azuku decides that he'll train on his own and he does just that training on his own but All Might knew he would do this so he brought somebody to see him 
he knows that they haven't been the best of friends and they know that they have a clashing of ideas but all might more or less just puts his pride aside and brings sir night eye to see izuku he tells him to watch the kid he's learning faster than you possibly imagine he's a perfect successor he says he has already done he's already given the kid the quirk and he promises that this is not a mistake he knows Azuku will be better than anything they would possibly imagine. Sir Nidai isn't so sure. I mean, they had a clear-cut person in Mirio, but All Might says that Azuku has something known as a fast learning quirk, a quirk that would allow him to master one for all faster than anybody could even in their entire life. Maybe even learn more of the secrets that one for all that one for all has to offer. Maybe, just maybe. His body or his mind is not the only thing that learns. His body learns with every experience he has, with every move he makes, with every tree he punches, with every kick, every kick he throws, he learns more and more. All Might explains to Sir Nidai that he knows that they haven't been the bestest of friends. And that's honestly his fault. It's All Might's fault. But he says that this kid could change the future for everybody. This kid is something different. He's been training all his life, martial arts, he's been learning, he's an elite level boxer, kickboxer, jujitsu specialist, everything. He could do everything. Sir Nairai is shocked and he begins to think that he wants to see into the future of what Izuku has to offer. He would do just that, seeing everything he has to see. Nairai would look at All Might and nod, saying that they'll speak very soon. And he wishes him good luck in teaching the young boy. Sir Nairai would leave and the training would continue on for Izuku. Izuku's power would increase but his body would be a little bit slower to learn how to develop and how to utilize one for all at higher levels without actually hurting himself. He gets himself to about 20 to about 25% before the UA entrance exam. The UA entrance exam will be a breeze and when he arrives All Might would just know that Azuku would pass with flying colors, maybe even blow away anything All Might has done in the past. Azuku would enter the exam and he would ignore everything going on around him. All he could think about is what's in front. He begins to focus, learn, and just everything around him just falls into place. The tests he passes with flying colors. And then he leads him to the gateway for the true entrance exam, the, well, practical of the exam. Defeating robots is something simple. The gates would swing open and Izuku would speed forward faster than anybody could even realize. He would destroy robot after robot with relative ease. Azuku obliterating every single robot in sight. He knows that this is his destiny. He knows that this right here is what he deserves and what he's going to get. He knew from the very beginning that his quirk would allow him to become a hero but he needed to go out and get it. And his actions led to these consequences. And these consequences are great. After some time would pass during the exam, a giant robot would eventually become stomp or come stomping out. Azuku would look for the robots and he would begin grabbing and scooping up anybody that needs to get out in or get out of harm's way. Even seeing a girl that is stuck under rubble, he would obliterate the rubble, grab her on, on it and put, him, put her on his shoulders as he runs away. Not worrying about destroying the robot, more worrying about saving and making sure everybody is safe. Azuku gets her to safety and she begins to thank him profusely, but he says that it's truly no problem. It's the job of a hero. The time would eventually run out and the UA entrance exam would be over. Azuku would be happy, would feel that he passed with flying colors, it's not even close, but what he didn't realize is that he would, he would not only be the number one person in the entrance exam, but he would shatter all the records before him. Shatter every last one of them. Azuku would be waiting at home for a couple days, eventually a week, and eventually he would get a message. It's All Might himself standing there, looking at Azuku saying that he's proud of the young boy. He's proud of what he's done. And truly, all his work is paid off. The number one student of the UA entrance exam. All Might congratulates him and tells him, welcome to not only class 1A, welcome to UA High School. Azuku would show his mother and they would both celebrate, excited. 
I mean, Izuku has waited and wanted for this moment for so long, and now it is finally here. Izuku, after a couple days would pass, would arrive in front of Yue, staring at the buildings as they tower above him. He's excited for his chance to prove that he truly is the best. He would enter his classroom and many kids in there would be talking and Bakugo would be getting lectured by Ida. Azuku would sit down not thinking much of it, not thinking much of anything that's going on. He would await the arrival of his teacher and future sensei. When, when everybody would begin flooding in, the girl that he saved by the name of Ochako Uraraka would then stumble in as well, profusely thanking Izuku again, but Izuku shakes his head, saying that it's the job of a hero, and that's what he wants to be, so that's how he should act. That's how everyone should act. He didn't say much after that, but Aizawa would walk in, smiling, kind of at least, in his own Aizawa way. A weird, creepy smirk. But Aizawa would put it away pretty quickly as he explains that, that they're not going to be doing much of this celebratory stuff. Yeah, they got into UA, but he's allowed to kick them out whenever he wants. He tells them all to go outside because they have a quirk assessment test. This quirk assessment test will analyze what they can truly do with their quirks just at a base level. When Izuku steps up to the plate, because obviously he got first in the exam, he would launch the ball at insane speeds. Not as far as he did normally, I mean, he, or maybe a little bit less than what he did normally, but of course he's not using 100% of one for all, he's using about 25%, but at the same time, he's still able to run extremely fast, insane grip on the grip strength, everything that he did bad on initially, he would do amazing on here, just a little bit less of a, a giant throw. Azuku would impress many with his abilities and impress many with what he's been doing and what he can do. Azuku is truly amazing. I mean, he shows up everybody and he eventually would get number one in the entire class and the promise of the idea that someone was going to be expelled, uh, Aizawa doesn't fulfill it. He's kind of too distracted. This kid, he's heard that he was good, but not this good. He seems calculated, coordinated. He seems like the perfect student. Aizawa won't say this out loud, but he can tell that the kid is leaps and bounds above everyone else, if not in power, in mental capacity and technique. He asks Suzuku after everything is said and done, after everyone has already left, if he's, well, knows martial arts, if he knows certain martial arts, and Azuku says that he knows most of them. Actually, he's mastered most of them. He's shocked. Aizawa is taken back by this, and he tells him he can leave. But Azuku asks why he asks, and he says that he can tell the kid is disciplined. Good job. Keep doing what you're doing. Azuku would leave and smile, thinking that his first day couldn't have gone better at UA. But there is more to come, and that next day would show exactly what Azuku is capable of. Heroes versus villains. Yes, seems simple, and when Aizawa speaks about it, he says that someone else will be teaching them. Azuku's actually surprised by this, but then realizes All Might is here. As All Might would bust through the door, he would say he has arrived, and he walks through the door like a normal person. He tells them all that more or less they'll be hero train. He'll, they'll be doing hero training. They all head out, get on their hero suits, and Azuku would put on a suit very resemblant of one that he had he, he had his mother make, but he would have it adjusted by the support heroes drastically to the point that it fits more his style of fighting. He does love kick heavy fighting, yeah he likes throwing hands, but he's more of a kicking type of person. He enjoys it. He thinks that the le his legs are far stronger than his hands, which would be true. One kick would hurt a lot more than one punch, at least if you knew how to throw it, and Izuku felt that's anything clothing wise that mimicked All Might in a way would be pretty good, but also allowing him to move. He doesn't want anything too tight. I mean, that would kind of suck when he's trying to throw kicks. Still though, he would arrive and he would look pretty cool. All Might would even say this, that the kid looks pretty good, looking like a real and true hero. All Might would then wait for the entire class to arrive as he explains to everybody, explaining the, what exactly they're going to be doing 
and that is they'll have a heroes a hero team and a villain team the hero team will be trying to seize a bomb the villain team will be defending that bomb to the best of their abilities and the first teams up bakugo and tenya ida on the villain side and azuku midoriya and ochaka uraraka on the hero side Azuku is, is, is pretty excited for this. He's excited to see what Bakugo has, especially in a controlled environment. So when the five minutes are up, he tells Ochako to look for the bomb as he'll, well, dictate the pace of the fight. She's confused, but he tells her that Bakugo will be coming for him very, very soon. He comes through the door and as expected, Bakugo would eventually arrive. Explosion after explosion would be sent toward ba or Azuku and Azuku would just bob and weave, not even using one for all at this point. He would kick Bakugo in the stomach, and it would more or less send him barreling backwards. Azuku would counter everything Bakugo has, and eventually Bakugo would work up a sweat, and he would see that the corridor in front of them, well, it's narrow. No way he's dodging this. He would wind up a blast, a blast not meant for indoors, a blast that would be made to kill somebody. Azuku would see him pull the pin, and would be shocked. What the hell is wrong with him? He activates one for all at 25%, trying to more or less dodge the best he possibly can, and he does get some singes on his arms, or on his arm, but he's able to kind of get out of the way. He looks at Bakugo, and immediately would charge forward with 25% of one for all, breaking his gauntlets, and then kicking him so hard in the stomach he's gasping for air. Azuku would knock him out and wrap him up in capture tape, and he would begin to think to himself that he's gonna, or it's All Might's gonna have to speak with Bakugo after this one. He races up the staircase at insane speeds, and eventually would would appear in in the bombs area, or at least where the room is. He would see Ochako and also Tenya kind of struggling, and he would dash in, knocking or knocking down Tenya and touching the bomb. Just like that, they have won but he's still baffled at the idea that Bakugo would take drastic measures like that and practically try to kill him. Not something he even expected, not even from a hothead like Bakugo. With that said though, they would head out and they would learn what they did wrong and what they did right. Azuku's team, or the heroes, basically did everything right. Bakugo's team on the other hand is either in Recovery Girls, or basically Bakugo's in Recovery Girls, and would be told exactly what they did wrong. Zuku wouldn't think much about it, but he would mostly think about Bakugo, about what he did and the drastic measures he decided to take. He shakes his head to basically get his mind off of that idea, and after the rest of the matches and the rest of the training is done, he would head off home. When he, when he would head off home, he would just think about what occurred and what happened. What is wrong with Bakugo? His head's not in the right place. But the next day, he would get some more training. He would be excited for this. I mean, it's a lot different. Aizawa would explain that they have rescue training. Rescue training would involve the USJ, a place that would basically simulate different scenarios. Class 1A would head over on a bus as Aizawa tells them all to be quiet and shut up. And when they would arrive, they would be greeted by Pro Hero 13. It seems as if everything is going to be amazing. This whole situation is going to be great, amazing training, and an amazing experience. But that would be a little different, because something terrifying would occur. Something that even Izuku didn't know was going to happen. Well, it's the arrival of the League of Villains. While they're standing there, they see a portal open up in the middle of the USJ. The portal would pour out villains, a Nomu would appear, and Shigaraki and Kurogiri would be standing right there. But that is for the next part of What If Deku Had a Fast Learning Quirk. And if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, leave a sub, and leave a comment down below. This is the Golden Kingdom. It is a compilation, or I guess a compilation, of, of me, which is Golden What Ifs, Crown Fiend, and also Explic. If you enjoy and you want to see more on this channel, this is a, uh, a What If that I... This is my first what if I've ever made in my life um, way back when and I decided I'm gonna remake it on this channel because I never finished it in the first place. So if you enjoy and you want to see more, let me know. We're actually skip or we upload once a week. It's my week this week, Crown's week the next week. But if you want to see this series sooner, make sure to blow up the video. 
maybe I'll give you guys an extra upload here and there. With that said, I hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.